So, um, yes, this is just a, a fairly brief overview of uh, WA's really earliest uh, aviation, well before um, the Great War, after which, of course, um, barnstorming and joyriding started to kick in, followed later by Norman Brealey's development of WAA and so on. So, in the embryonic years before aviation and before, sorry, the embryonic years before the Great War, uh, flying was largely just a form of entertainment mostly, uh, when aerial demonstrations and stunts were performed to thrill spectators. But it was a catalyst for the growing interest in, interest in flying, and it saw the developing efforts to design, build and fly uh, aircraft, and WA was no exception. And while by today's standards these events were very um, unsophisticated, uh, unregulated and risky, they were certainly very brave. The first known uh, flight in WA was uh, in 1891 by an American so-called aeronaut by the so-called Professor Price who visited Perth to board a series of hot air ballooning, ballooning uh, exhibitions. His first event uh, was in early March of that year near the Albion Hotel in Cottesloe, uh, but it ended in disappointment. A fire damaged to the balloon before liftoff and the event was cancelled much to the anger of the thousand spectators who wanted their money back. <laughs> Fortunately, there were no injuries um, from the balloon or from the um, angry spectators. Another event took place, uh, place a few weeks later uh, from a vacant block in Irwin Street in Perth, this time with 2,000 spectators. Uh, the balloon rose uh, with Professor Price hanging from a trapeze 40 feet below. However, with our Fremantle doctor blowing, the balloon quickly drifted northeastwards over our small city, and with the good professor hanging 40 feet below, he, he got caught in a tree in Stirling Street. <laughs> so, with the help of passers by, he descended the tree, and the stricken balloon was later retrieved. Now, this modest aerial ascent was the first known flight in WA. First known flight in WA. Some country exhibitions followed in 2J, Northern, York and other, uh, other places, uh, after which Professor Price left WA. Professor Price had been accompanied to WA by a Miss Millie Viola, who was billed as, quote unquote, a renowned lady balloonist. After Price's departure, she stayed on to perform solo exhibitions until later that year. At one of her early events in Perth, her balloon deflated prematurely and she came down in Gugiri's stables near the Perth town hall, <coughs> literally landing on top of a horse according to local press at the time. It's <laughs> an illustration from the other day. Another time uh, she ascended Perth's Occidental Hotel, it doesn't exist now but it's sort of where the railway line is nowadays, uh, but northerly winds brought her down unceremoniously on mud flats uh, across the river in South Perth. She persevered, however, and later achieved a 5,000 feet ascent and thrilled spectators with daring parachute jumps. Over a dozen events were held in Perth during the year, in Perth, Fremantle, Guildford and country towns, and these were a varying success, given challenging weather conditions and problems with capricious <coughs> balloons. At her last performance in August, near the west end of the Perth railway station, Miss Viola's balloon was destroyed by fire and she then decided it was time to leave WA. Miss Viola travelled to Albany to catch a departing sailing ship and uh, during her stay over there in Albany, uh, she held one final event using a spare balloon and this was very successful and uh, finally Miss Viola left happily from our shores. Nearly 20 years later, in uh, 1910, uh, a Perth soft drink manufacturer sponsored the BB Balloon Company to perform some exhibitions in Perth and Kalgoorlie. Advertised as the OT Balloon Carnival, they shared a billing with a local footy game and a band, and like Professor Price and Miss Viola before them, these events were of mixed success. The carnival's two aeronauts, Albert Eastwood and Christopher Sedfi, held their first event at the WACA attended by several thousand spectators. The event quickly met near disaster when their balloon, which was named the City of Melbourne, caught fire from the air heater just as it began rising with the hapless Sempfi dangling from a rope below. As the balloon soared upwards, Sempfi dragged himself up, uh, up the rope to a trapeze bar where he quickly donned a parachute and jumped to the ground, landing behind the Wacker scoreboard relatively uninjured. 
<laughs> this is very high drama indeed, and Dr. Plan's choreographed act couldn't have done it better, all by accident. At a second event at the Wacker, Zephy's other balloon, known as Edward VII, rose to 5,000 feet, and he jumped spectacularly using three separate balloons, patriotically coloured red, white, and blue, in sequence. Alarmingly, however, he landed in the Swan River near the Bunbury Railway Bridge and was rescued by two men who brought him back safely to the shore. The dripping Zephy and his parachute were given a lift back to the Wacker by a chance passing motorist of some sort uh, 30 minutes later. By now, Zephy must have been questioning his career choice. Nonetheless, he went on to perform another event at Wacker in late April. Uh, this time, his parachute jump from the balloon brought him down near the Sandingham Hotel in Belmont, several miles away. The OT Balloon Carnival went on to perform five more events in Kalgoorlie and Boulder in May 1910, and then the troop finally departed WA back to the Eastern States. In the meanwhile, in 1909, uh, foreseeing the future strategic benefits, the Commonwealth Government held a competition to design and construct a military aircraft with a prize of £5,000. The competition was open to machines built in Australia and the specs required the aircraft to be able to rise under its own power without the aid of a launching apparatus, land safely again, travel at least 20 miles per hour, remain aloft for at least five hours, hover and carry two people pilot and an observer. And there were two entries from WA. Firstly, there was a Robert McMullen of Fremantle who proposed an aircraft known as the Boomerang. Um, it would have an automatic in-flight um, stability apparatus by movable wingtips controlled by piano wire and a lever. Newspapers reported that McMullen built a model of the proposed aeroplane, uh, which was inspected by the Department of Defense. Uh, which was inspected by the uh, Minister of Defence, who commented favourably upon it, according to local press. McMullen also showed the model to J.J. Hammond uh, during his later visit to uh, WA, who commented that the principles of McMullen's uh, design could, quote, revolutionise aviation. And secondly, the other WA entrant was Edgar Le Henderson, who was referred to as a skillful young inventor and designer. He proposed an aircraft driven by two propelling fans at the rear and lifting fans above, thus addressing the hover requirement, which was a concept much before its time, given Igor Sikorsky's development decades later. For safety reasons, in the event of engine failure, the aircraft would have built-in parachutes, and the quote at the time was to steady any untoward descent that might be made. And in the case of falling into water, uh, the aircraft was built to float. The Henderson also proposed air brakes to slow the aircraft prior to landing, again a concept well before its time. A model of the proposed aircraft was uh, put on display at the Leadable Town Hall, where the Henderson also gave talks to interested audiences, including the WA Premier at the time, so you two more. Neither WA aircraft appears to have progressed beyond the design phase and in the end the Commonwealth competition came to nothing as the specs were beyond the limits of technical know-how uh, of the day and nationwide no uh, working machines were submitted. Fortunately, the Henderson's plans, um, a view of which was on a previous slide, um, survived and were curated at the Aviation Heritage Museum in Bull Creek. Regarding J.J. Hammond, uh, much has already been written and spoken in this forum about um, Joseph Joel Hammond, uh, the New Zealander, and his demonstration flights in Perth in January 1911, when he skillfully coaxed his fragile box kite into the air over the Belmont Park race course. But for today, in the interest of time and focus, this presentation won't detail Hammond's um, exhibitions, except to say that uh, Hammond's were the first heavier than air flights in WA after the balloon from 1891, lighter than air. And his flights were certainly the, the most profound and defining time for early WA aviation. Uh, and for Perth people, they were an exciting and unforgettable uh, aviation experience. And uh, thirdly, he, he was the inspiration for aviation pioneers such as Norman Brearley, who watched Hammond at Belmont Park 
as an adolescent. To appreciate the flavour and excitement of these events, here's some quotes from the West Australian in those days. Quite flowery, but uh, interesting. Some of the quotes are, the machine sped through the air with perfect freedom and the grace of movement which delighted the crowd. After circling for some time and driving down the wind at a rate estimated at not less than 60 miles an hour, the pilot descended safely with the greatest freedom. A large muster of people watched the graceful movements of the machine with breathless interest. And finally, Mr. Hammond was an object of worship when he came down. Men and women uh, ran to him to clasp his hand and to be seen talking to him, to implore him to take them up on a trip, on a trip to the stars. And tiny children were held up in the air so they might too join the hero worship. Moving on after Hammond, between 1911 and 1912, a Perth gentleman by the name of Alex Fraser took it, took it upon himself to build a monoplane uh, powered by a three-cylinder engine. He attempted to fly the machine from Burswood several times, uh, but was uh, unsuccessful from Burswood Island, but was unsuccessful. And in Albany in 1913, he and his partners uh, rebuilt the machine, and they attempted to fly this from uh, the Albany racecourse, uh, but it unfortunately crashed into the perimeter fence. Following some repairs, a third attempt was made from uh, an Albany beach, and although it became briefly airborne, the machine lost control and crashed into the surf. No further attempts were made, and the aircraft was dismantled. And after Hammond's heavier-than-air flights in 1911, <coughs> Arthur Jones became the next aviator to give powered flight demonstrations in WA. In 1914, he was sponsored by some Calgillio hoteliers to visit the West, and he brought his 1913 Quadron biplane with him. The aircraft was assembled at Belmont Park Racecourse and ferried to Lowton Park for the first uh, flying display in May. At the event, uh, engine troubles uh, plagued the machine, and although the Quadron took off successfully, uh, due to its poor power, as Jones couldn't perform the planned flying program, so he ferried the machine back to Belmont Park. And as Brian Hernan mentioned to me earlier today, with the cheers turned to jeers when he chuffed off with the machine away from the venue. There's no record of any further flying events in Perth, but in June, the aircraft and crew travelled to Kalgoorlie uh, for some further flying demonstrations. Uh, the first at Kalgoorlie Racecourse was a great success, attended by 4,500 paying spectators with another 9,000 unpaid spectators just outside the grounds. <laughs> <laughs> the next event at Boulder Racecourse ended in disappointment when strong winds prevented a takeoff and the event was cancelled again. When the winds had abated at another event in June, Jones took off safely from Boulder Racecourse and made some impressive circuits over Boulder and returned to Kalgoorlie. The aeroplane was then dismantled and packed for its return to the east. Moving on to 1914, a group of young men in Kalgoorlie, led by uh, Arthur Gear, <coughs> formed the, the Kalgoorlie Aeroplane Syndicate. The syndicate's aim was to construct a two-seat biplane in Kalgoorlie. Working from a set of Royal Aircraft Factory specs, an engine was purchased and construction began in, uh, began in Wellsman's Furniture Factory in uh, Boulder Road, Kalgoorlie. After 12 months, the aircraft went on public display in the Kalgoorlie Town Hall. Uh, it was later moved to Kilgardie in preparation for its maiden flight, which took place in May 1915 at the Kilgardie Racecourse. Piloted by gear, the maiden flight was very successful. Several more flights were undertaken, all successfully, including a triumphant landing in Kilgardie's main street, Bailey Street. <laughs> there it is. However, bad luck soon followed. On a test flight in June, the aeroplane made an emergency landing outside Coolgardie, resulting in just some minor damage. But the following day, the aircraft was loaded onto a horse-drawn lorry to be returned to Coolgardie for repair, but unfortunately one of the horses was spooked and bolted, dragging the aircraft into a telegraph pole and causing major damage. Repairs took four months. Uh, to complete it by October, uh, it was in the air once again. It then gave a wonderful flying display over the Kalgoorlie race course to 3,000 paying spectators and at the event, Mrs. Davidson, the Kalgoorlie mayor's wife, christened the aeroplane as Kalgoorlie 
although it became commonly referred to as the Kalgoorlie biplane. Later, some damage occurred during a joyride flight when a passenger panicked while in the air and gear needed to make a rapid descent and landing. In December 1915, the aeroplane was transported to Perth by rail and uh, undertook some flying exhibitions at the Belmont Park uh, Racecourse and Lowton Park. Attendances at uh, the Perth events by paying spectators were disappointing and this gave rise to some public criticism by gear. In a fundraising effort for the Red Cross, and with the approval of the PMG, uh, the syndicate provided WA's first ever aerial post uh, service between Perth and Fremantle for a grand uh, distance of 12 miles at a cost of sixpence per letter. A similar fundraising event was also undertaken for the Perth Children's Hospital by the aeroplane. By early 1916, amidst the heightened interest and success of this aeroplane, Gia enlisted in the Australian Flying Corps to serve in the Great War. Happily, he returned home safely afterwards. The last known flight of the Kelgoody biplane was in January 1916, carrying a passenger, Don Pedro, on a 15-minute flight over Perth. The aeroplane was eventually put into storage uh, in the Union Brewery premises. This building is actually still, still exists. It's on the corner of uh, Stewart and Palmerston Streets in uh, Northbridge. I think they're now apartments. Uh, we remained until 1929 at which time uh, the aeroplane was restored by members of the Flying, uh, Flying Corps Association so it could take part in the WA centenary procession of 1929. <coughs> After this celebration, the machine was stored by the Perth Museum. Uh, the airframe quickly deteriorated over the years and in 1938 the engine was presented to the Royal Aero Club where it was put on display. Ultimately, all that's believed to remain of this proud machine, WA's first locally built aircraft, is its propeller, located at the Aviation Heritage Museum in Bull Creek, and here. And thus came the end of WA's earliest flights. Um, following the outbreak of the Great War, young Australians trained as pilots and served in the battlefields of the Western Front and Palestine. And upon their return home after the war, these pilots had a strong appetite to use their exciting new flying skills to earn a living. And together with the next generation of civilian trained pilots, entrepreneurship developed and these aviation pioneers' <coughs> names, together with the next generation of civilian trained pilots, entrepreneurship developed and these aviation pioneers became household names in WA and Australia in the 1920s, 30s and 40s. And these are all other stories to tell. Thank you.